Sutra. The Buddha asks us bhikkhus to speak. I was the first to understand, and the first common certified me and named me Anatta. His wonderful sound was both sacred and all pervasive. It was through sound that I became an arhat. Commentary: The Buddha asks us bhikkhus to speak. Buddha, you have now asked all the bhikkhus how they attained perfect penetration. I was the first to understand, and the first common certified me and named me Yanata. I was the first to become enlightened and obtain liberation. His wonderful sound was both sacred and all pervasive. I heard the Buddha's subtle, wonderful sound, and it tallied with my self nature. It was both intimate and perfectly pervading. It fused perfectly with my self nature. It was strong sound that I became an arhat. I cultivated through sound and became enlightened. Kwanin Bodhisattva cultivated the perfect penetration of the ear organ. After the twenty-five sages each discussed their perfect penetration, Manjushri Bodhisattva selects the ear as the best sense organ for Ananda to use to obtain perfect penetration. He says, "Cultivation of the ear organ is the most appropriate dharma." Sutra. The Buddha asked about. It's about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, sound is the superior means. Commentary: The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. The Buddha asks which of the eighteen realms was the one through which I obtained perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, sound is the superior means. My enlightenment came through sound. It was in that way. That I obtained the fusion of ahatri, so I think sound is the most important. It is the best method to use for cultivation. Sutra Upanishad arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "I also saw the Buddha when he first accomplished the way. I learned to complete contemplate the appearance of impurity until I grew." So lost it and came to understand that the nature of all form is unclean. They are bones and such to dust only turn to emptiness, and so both emptiness and form are done away with. With this realization, I accomplished the path beyond learning. Commentary: Upanishad's name means the emptiness of the nature of form. Sir Sin Kung. He had always been blocked with strong sexual desire. Because of it, the Buddha taught him to cultivate the contemplation of impurity. This means that he observed how his own physical body, as well as everyone else, was unclean. The specific practice is called contemplating the nine aspects of impurity. One contemplates swelling after death. The body starts to swell up. To contemplate the green mottled flesh, after the swelling, the body breaks out in green areas like big bruises. Three contemplate flesh broken open, after it turns green, it pops open. Four contemplate blood and feel, <laughs> when it breaks open, the blood and other things flow out. Five contemplate pus and rot. The pus begins to ooze out of the body as it starts to rot. Six contemplate it being eaten by worms. Out of the pus and rot emerge worms which feast on the flesh. Seven contemplate it scattering. The flesh begins to fall off. Eight contemplate the bare bones. Once the flesh is gone, there are just the bones underneath. Nine contemplate it being burned. It is burned by the fire and turns into ashes. The ashes drift into emptiness and turn into dust until, at last, there is nothing left. Upanishad was very attached to forms. He would take special notice of every woman he saw to remark on how beautiful this one was, how exquisite that one was, and how attractive another was. He put all his efforts into this kind of thing. 
After he met the Buddha, the Buddha taught him to cultivate the contemplation of nine aspects of purity. Upanishad arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, I also saw the Buddha when he first accomplished the way. I learned to contemplate the appearance of purity until I grew to lose it. I too was with the Buddha just after he accomplished the way, and the Buddha taught me to cultivate the contemplation of nine aspects of impurity. From this, I realized that no matter how beautiful a person may be while alive, no matter how attractive or how exquisite she is, so that the more you think about her, the more enticing she becomes. Nevertheless, once she dies, she will she will swell up just as grossly as anyone else. She get just as green and mottled, and her flesh will break open. Could you love her then? Then the blood and filthy oozes out, and the corpse starts to stink. Dogs like it at this stage, but people stay far away from it. Then the pus and rot forms. Just thinking about it makes you want to vomit. It would be impossible to kiss her by this time. Then the worms grow, big ones and little ones. The flies and blue flies come in swarms. They draw near to her, and at that point, you wouldn't even get jealous. The flesh scatters, and the bare bones are all that remain. Then it's burned, and the entire thing disappears. Tell me, where has that beautiful person gone? Through this contemplation, he grew to loathe forms and came to understand that the nature of all form is unclean. He realized that no matter how beautiful the form was, its also was impure. The father's semen and the mother's blood is an unclean origin. Bare bones and subtle dust all return to emptiness. So, both emptiness and form are done away with. With this realization, I accomplished the path beyond learning. That is the fourth portion of a hardship. Sutra, the first came once certified me and named me Upanishad. The object of form came to an end, and wonderful form was both secret and all pervasive. First, it was through the appearance of form that I became an arhat. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, form is the superior means. Commentary: The first came one certified me and named me Upanishad. The Buddha sealed and certified me and named me the emptiness of the nature of form. I saw through form; it was empty in its nature and just disappeared. And so I got rid of my attachment. The object of form came to an end, since my unclean form no longer existed. Wonderful form was both secret and all pervasive. In true emptiness, it turned into such a wonderful form. It was through the appearance of form that I became an arhat, that I awakened to the way. I was the one who used to be fond of sex, but I got beyond it. I transcended it. The Buddha asked about perfect penetration. The Buddha wants to know which of the eighteen realms is perfectly penetrating. As I have been certified to it, form is the superior means. I awakened to the way through the object of form. I saw through the object of form, and was certified to the fruition. Sutra, the pure youth adorned with fragrance, arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "I heard the first come one teach me to contemplate attentively all conditioned appearances." Commentary. The pure youth adorned with fragrance was adorned with a fragrant light. Pure youth does not mean that he was a child, a person so young he didn't understand anything at all. Pure youth means he entered the way as a virgin youth. He was a virgin when he left home. He never married. After Upanishad finished explaining his causes and conditions, the pure youth adorned with fragrance. Arose from his seat, bowed at the Buddha's feet, and said to the Buddha, "I heard the first come and teach me to contemplate attentively all conditioned appearances. 
The Buddha told me to look into all conditioned dramas in minute detail. Sutra. After I heard the Buddha's instruction, I sat in repose and acquired a, a pure dwelling. When I saw the bishop's light sinking in sands, the fragrant sands quietly entered my nostrils. I contemplated this fragrance. It did not come from the wood, it did not come from emptiness, it did not come from the smoke, and it did not come from the fire. There was no place it came from and no place it went to. Because of this, my discriminating mind was dispelled and I attained the absence of outflows. Commentary After I heard the Buddha's instruction, I sat in repose in the quiet of a pure dwelling. The Buddha told me to look into conditioned appearances, and I went off to cultivate and develop my skill. A pure dwelling refers to a place where people are vegetarian and the environment is tranquil. He uses this expression to praise the Buddha. When I was in my pure dwelling cultivating, I saw the visual light sinking in sand. Sinking in sand is called agar agaru in Sanskrit. This fragrant wood sinks when placed in water, and from this it takes its name. The fragrant sand quietly entered my nostrils. I contemplated this fragrance. It did not come from the wood. It did not come from emptiness. I contemplated the source of the fragrances. It was not the wood. If it came from the wood alone, there would be no need to burn it in order for it to emit fragrance. If it came from emptiness, it should be ever present. But it must be lit for the fragrance to rise. Before it is lit, there is no pervasive fragrance. The fragrance also does not come from the smoke, nor does it come from the fire. There was no place it came from and no place it went to. Because of this, my discriminating mind was dispelled and I attained the absence of outflows. Because I contemplated in this way, my mind subject to production and extinction disappeared. I was certified to the fruition of no outflows. Sutra, the first common certified me and called me adorned with fragrance. Defiling sand suddenly vanished and wonderful fragrance was both sacred and all pervasive. It was through the adornment of fragrance that I became an ahad. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As I have been certified to it, the adornment of fragrance is a superior means. Commentary The first common certified me and called me adorned with fragrance. Defining sand suddenly vanished and wonderful fragrance was both sacred and all pervasive. It was through the adornment of fragrance that I became an ahad. The Buddha asks about perfect penetration. He wants to know which sense organ is perfectly penetrating. As I have been certified to it, reckoning it from my point of view, the adornment of fragrance is the superior means. Sutra, the two drama princes, physician, king, and superior physician, the five and five hundred. Brahma gods in the assembly arose from their seats and bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, From beginningless compass until now, we have been good doctors for the world. In our mouths, we have tasted many herbs, wood, metals, and stones of the Saha world, a hundred and eight thousand flavors. We know in detail the bitter, sour, salty, bland, sweet, and pungent flavors, and the like, in all their combinations and inherent changes. We have a thorough knowledge of whether they be cooling or warming, poisonous or non-poisonous. Commentary The pure youth adorned with fragrance awakened to the way through the sense object of fragrance. Upanishad awakened to the way through the sense object of form. Kewundinya awakened to the way through the sense object of sound. These two bodhisattvas, physician, king, and superior physician, awakened to the way through the sense object of flavor. Physician, king, and superior physician, bodhisattva, were 
brothers. In the past, the physician King Bodhisattva made a vow to be a good doctor for the world, so that all who came to see him would be cured of their illness, no matter what the sickness was. He, he made this vow at the time of the Buddha called Vaidura Light before the Bishop Sun Treasury in those Dharma Assembly was an elder named Constellation Light. His brother made a similar vow at the same time. Similarly, in China, there was Emperor Shen Neng who tested the hundred herbs and developed the science of purple medicine. His stomach was like a glass and he could see whether what he had eaten was poisonous or not. Unfortunately, people in modern China totally failed to comprehend such historical events as this. They say such things are merely legends, superstition, uh, superstitions. Actually, this is a commonplace occurrence documented in Chinese medicinal texts. But modern Chinese students don't read the classics and so they don't understand such things. Having read this text myself, I am convinced that Emperor Shen Neng was a reincarnation of physician King Bodhisattva, who came to China to have found the study of medicine there. The two drama princes, physician king and superior physician, and 500 Brahma gods in the assembly arose from their seats and the Buddha is the Drama King, so another name for Bodhisattva is Drama Prince. These two Bodhisattvas and their retinue of 500 gods arose from their seats, bowed at the Buddha's feet and said to the Buddha, From beginning this compass until now, we have been good doctors for the world. For in our mouths, we have tasted many herbs, wood, metals and stones of the Saha world, 108,000 flavors. At that time in India, the nature of medicines was composed of these four elements, herbs, wood, metals, and stones. We know in detail the bitter, sour, salty, bland, sweet, and pungent flavors, and the like, in all their combinations and inherent changes. We know which medicines are compatible and which ones are not. Those which are compatible can cause illnesses when mixed in appropriate combinations. Those which are not compatible but are in opposition to one another can kill people if taken in combination. So it says in the Yao Xin Fu Chitaiza on the nature of medicines. Of the basic herbs, there are 18 that act in opposition and 19 flavors. Fanlo, Beilian, and Kung Wu. That refers to Fan Xia, Gua Lu, Beilian, and Wu Dou, which are in opposition to one another. Licorice roots do not combine with Kai Zhao, Ba Chi, Gan Tui, or Lian Hua. Licorice root is described as a predominantly compatible herb in the treatise on the nature of medicines. It can act as a base for many combinations, but it is not compatible with Kai Zhao, Ba Chi, Gan Zui, or Lian Hua. If someone takes it in combination with these, he might die. Li Lu and Xin Xin together will also kill if taken together. Xin Xin taken by itself cause headaches. We have a thorough knowledge of how these herbs are compatible or incompatible and which ones have changes inherent in them, which will occur if they are used in combination with the wrong herbs, as well as whether they be cooling or warming, poisonous or non-poisonous. They can be cold, hot, neutral or warm. Some people whose natures are cool to begin with can take cooling medicines, and people with warm natures are unable to stand a warming medicine. The two bodhisattvas also knew how much poison was contained in any given herb. Sutra, while serving the first come one, we came to know that the nature of flavors is not empty and is not existent, nor is it the body or mind, nor is it apart from body and mind. 
We became enlightened by discriminating among flavors. Commentary Why serving the first come one, we reverently paid homage and made offerings to the Buddha. We came to know that the nature of flavors is not empty and is not existent. Flavors don't come from emptiness, nor they come from existence, nor is it the body or mind, nor is it apart from body and mind. The nature of flavors does not arise from the tongue's taste, tasting flavors, nor do flavors exist apart from the tongue's tasting them. We became enlightened by discriminating among flavors. We contemplated in minute detail the source of flavors and from this became enlightened. When we had made discriminations to so the ultimate point, to the point where there could be no further discrimination, we became enlightened. We became aware that originally flavor is flavorless. Sutra, the first common sealed and certified us brothers and named us as a bodhisattvas, physician, king, and superior physician. Now in the assembly, we are Dharma princes who have ascended to the bodhisattva level because we became enlightened by means of flavors. Commentary, the third common sealed and certified us brothers and named us as Bodhisattva's physician, king, and superior physician. The Buddha gave us Bodhisattva's these two names. Now, in the assembly, we are Dharma princes who have ascended to the Bodhisattva level because we became enlightened by means of flavors. We tasted flavors until we became enlightened and reached the level of a Bodhisattva. Sutra, the Buddha asks about perfect penetration. As we have been certified to eat the cause of flavors in the superior means. Commentary Flavor is the best method. Flavors are the best for eating. They are the most flavorful and also the least flavorful. The least flavorful is the most supreme, wonderful flavor. But you have to taste it for yourself to find out whether or not it is flavorful.